One of the core principles at Firebase is to simplify development. And that's why last year we released the Firebase Emulator Suite. The Emulator Suite is a command line tool that allows you to run Cloud Firestore, Cloud Functions, Cloud PubSub, and the real-time database right on your local machine. And this makes prototyping your app and running tests and continuous integration much easier. But we heard from you that you wanted more than just a command line tool, that you wanted visual tools to help you develop locally, to do things like filter through your Cloud Functions logs, bulk import local data, and visual tools to test your data structures. So here at Firebase, we formed a team to build that visual tool. And last week, we released the local Firebase emulator UI. My name is David East. I'm a developer advocate here at Firebase, and I'm going to teach you how to get started with the emulator UI in just 15 minutes ish. And that's a lot to cover. So I'm going to need the help from an expert. Hey, everyone. My name is Tyler Crow, and I'm the product manager for the emulator suite. I'll be popping in from time to time to answer David's questions and give some helpful hints and tricks as we run through the Emulator Suite UI. Seriously, I'm gonna need that help. But the goal in this video is not just to show you how the Emulator UI works, but also to transition you to a local first Firebase development. So let's get started. Even though the Emulator UI is a local web app itself, we boot it up in the terminal with the Firebase CLI. Make sure you've upgraded to version 8.4 or above, but I recommend being on the latest version because a couple of new features are already out. I'm going to start by initializing a blank Firebase project with Firebase init. Then I'll select the products I need, and since I'm demoing everything, I'll select everything. I'm going to enter my project ID and other important information to get to the spot where I specify which emulators I want initialized, which again, I want them all. Here is where you can specify what ports you want to run each emulator and UI on. For me, I'm fine with all the defaults. Now I just need to boot up the emulator with Firebase Emulators Start. This gives me a screen letting me know what emulators are running on what ports. The emulator UI port by default will boot up on 4000. So let's open it up. The emulator starts out by showing you an overview of all your local running services. Now you might notice this looks a little bit different from the Firebase console. It's purple. And why did we do that? Actually, why did we do that? Hey, Tyler. We wanted to be extra clear that the emulator UI was different from the production UI. Mixing those up could be dangerous. So we introduced a new color to the Firebase palette, purple. You'll notice as you navigate around that purple appears in the buttons, the select states, and the hover states. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that we've introduced a new favicon for Firebase with that purple flavor in it. If you do need to get to the Firebase console, you can go there through a link in the overview page. Now let's see this thing in action. I'm going to start with the real-time database. First off, I want to call out that the real-time database viewer has been completely overhauled. It might look familiar now, but the editing controls are a bit more sophisticated. Adding new nodes gives you an inline editor similar to Firestore. By default, we'll populate child nodes with push IDs for keys. And you can select from a whole array of data types, like arrays but also including a map, which is basically an object. Now, this is great for quick data manipulation, but what I really need when developing apps is a bulk import of data. And you can do exactly that from either a file select or a drag and drop on the viewport. Just like that, we have a whole data set to work with. And while it's really nice to be able to look at this test data here in the emulator, I really want to hook it up to an app. So let me dive over to my code editor. Right here, I have some code in editor, and it works as a task app that hooks up to the real-time database. So rather than preferring this configuration to talk to a production instance, I am going to write this little if statement. 
and I'm going to check to see if the location's host name is equal to local host because I know I'm local. And if that's the case, then I'm going to use a config that only supplies the database URL, which is localhost 9000, the port I have it booted up on, and then a query string of NS equals my uh, project ID emulator UI and NS being namespace. And what's great about this is just because it's hooked up to the local emulator doesn't mean I have to make any other code changes except for this configuration. So if I open up my app, you'll see that it all works exactly the same, except it just runs locally. So this app has different filter states. I can filter tasks, whether they're complete or incomplete, whether they're due today or this week, or they're by a certain category, work, fitness, personal, finance, whatever. And so I know with the real-time database that I get one explicit query on the tasks node. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do multiple queries. Um, Tyler? Instead of relying on a query, we can store the completed tasks and nodes in the database. This implicitly will give us a query and still allow us to query within the completed tasks. This is a classic example of denormalization. Ah. That's a good idea. Let's refactor our database structure in the UI. The real-time database viewer has a filtering feature that creates a query behind the scenes and filters down the data set. Oh, you can even enable a table view for your RTDB data at any level. So I have this data filtered, but I want to copy it to a new location in the database, which I can do with the new clone feature. The clone feature will take all the data at this location and copy it to a new path in the database. If there's a filter applied, you have the option of only cloning the filtered data set, which is exactly what I want to test right now. Now, I have all these tasks split out by completed state, but what about category? Could I do the same thing? This is a bit more complicated because I could have an infinite number of categories, so I can't just clone them by hand. Uh, Tyler? Now for something really powerful. If you open up the dev tools, we send you a little message letting you know that you can use the Firebase SDK right there in your browser. This means you can write JavaScript to read, write, and manipulate the data in the real-time database emulator in any way you see fit. Chrome makes this really easy with the snippets feature. So to store each task by its category, I'm going to denormalize. So I'll create a method called denormalize that takes in a database instance. And inside of here, we're gonna read all the tasks with async await. I want to make sure that each task is underneath each category that it belongs to. And so to do this, I'll loop through each snapshot and get its category and then create one big object. And this object will store each category as a key. And then within each one of these category keys, we'll store the actual task. And then once that's done, we can save the whole thing to the root of the database. And just like that, when the snippet is run, we have all of the data denormalized out to the right spot. So by each category. The emulator UI gives you a bunch of visual tools to help boost your productivity. But whenever you need to do something a bit more complicated, you can always head to the dev tools. Now with the real-time database covered, let's go over Firestore and functions. The Firestore data viewer is going to be very familiar to all of you longtime Firestore users. You can do all the things that you'd expect from the console, such as finding documents or even filtering them. So you can enter the field you want to filter by, the condition, what the value is, and then also whether it's ascending or descending. And as always, we will show you what that query looks like in code. And then when you apply it, you can see the walks that met that criteria. But another awesome thing that we added was the ability to clear all of your data with just this one button which you should not be afraid to do because while we don't have any UI tools just yet for importing data into Firestore, you can do that with the CLI. In the command line, you can export existing data in a running emulator. You can do that with the command Firebase emulators export, and then you provide the export path. So you can call it seed, test data, whatever. I'm gonna name it seed. 
And if you have existing data, it's gonna ask you if it's okay to overwrite it, which in this case, I think that's fine. And my export is complete. Now, remember what this path name is because you're going to use it when you restart the emulator UI. And I will use the Firebase emulators start command to start it back up again. But this time I'm going to use this import flag and I can specify my path, which we named as seed. And we're up and running again. And for some reason this time, due to all the crazy things I do in my dev machine, I wasn't able to start on 4000, but the CLI will start me on the next available port, which in this case is 4001. Now back in my emulator UI, we have all the data that we exported, and that means I don't have to worry about deleting it whenever I want to. The Firestar UI is already pretty advanced, so there's not too much to show off. What I'd really like to do right now is show you how it all works with Cloud Functions. The data in this Firestore viewer represents a walk logging app. Every time you take a walk, you log an entry. I'd like to add a feature where I can automatically log the weather from the location. So let's write a Cloud Function. We'll trigger it off of an onCreate trigger on the walks location. And when a document is created, I'm going to query a weather API and then update the document. And all of this is going to happen locally. Now, we recommend that when you write Cloud Functions that you try to mock your services locally when developing. So everything is really fast. So instead of using a real weather API, I'm going to mock one with a Cloud Function. I know, it's very meta. This is just my preference, but feel free to call out to over the network if that best suits your needs. So this mock function is just going to retrieve the location from the body, just pass that into this little fake weather map and return back what will be a hard-coded weather. Uh, I could do something with random, but this is just easy for now. Now I want to call out to this get weather trigger. So I'm gonna save the endpoint as a constant and then now inside of update weather trigger, we'll get the location of the newly created document. And we can use that to pass as the body of the fetch request of our cloud function we just created. When we get back the weather data as a response, and then subsequently as JSON, we can update the document with the weather data. And since we're using async await, we have to make sure to mark this method as async, which I forget to do all the time. The emulator instantly picks up these code changes and we are ready to test. So let's create a new walk. But nothing is happening. Uh, hey, Tyler. In the logs tab, you can see all the logs from all the emulators in the suite. Using the fuzzy search, if we search by the function name, we can find all the logs for that function trigger. Now, you'll notice here that we made our mistake because we used a relative URL instead of an absolute URL. If we do a quick change here, and a quick test. There we go, we have a successful trigger now. Okay, that was a lot and we didn't even get to the PubSub emulator, which if you wanna see a video on that, make sure to leave a comment. And if you wanna see a video on how to test your security rules with the emulator, check out Todd Kerbelman's and Rachel Meyer's video that happened just last week. So I hope in these 15-ish minutes that you learned how to have a local first Firebase development workflow. And if you want to see any features out of the emulator UI, make sure to hit us up on GitHub because this project is open source. So we'd love to see issues and pull requests from you. And remember this UI, it's brand new. So as excited as we are about what it can do today, we're even more excited about the features that we can add in the future.